Over the past three years, I've made a lot of wooden bowls. And as a graduating high school senior, I kind of wanted to build something really unique before I headed off to college. After I did some research, I realized I'd only really crafted or seen bowls with geometric shapes on the sides. So I set about designing a bowl with my nickname, Kehau, inlaid on the side. I used SketchUp to create a digital model of all the pieces I would need, as well as the general shape, dimensions, and raw materials that would go into the finished product. I started by creating the segmented rings, basically creating a lot of little trapezoids that I can glue together to form a ring. I first joint the wood to get a smooth edge. Next, I take the wood over to the planer to get the surface even. I'm using a combination of walnut and poplar for this bowl. After sanding the boards flat on the surface sander, I can now rip the boards into long strips. After I've cut all the strips, I can set the table saw up to cut the segments. I angle my fence at 15 degrees. I'm cutting rings of 12 segments, meaning the angle between two pieces is 30 degrees. Now I can go into full-scale production mode. I actually had an incident on the table saw where a piece got caught and kicked back at me. Thankfully, no one was injured, but it definitely taught me a lesson to respect the saw a little bit more. About 50 cuts later, I was done. I actually decided to take out one of the rings so the bowl wouldn't be quite as tall. Now I sand each segment to get it ready for gluing. I glue the segments in pairs. Since there's no clamps for this, I'm forced to use my hands. The pairs eventually become halves. As you can see, the halves don't intersect perfectly because the angle on the table saw isn't incredibly accurate. I sand the two halves. Perfect fit. So I glue up the rings and sand them flat. Now I need to cut out what will be the base of the bowl. I cut out two rough circles on the bandsaw. One is the base of the bowl, the other is a waste block that I use to mount the piece to the lathe. With the bottom half of my bowl complete, I can stack all the layers and glue them. Gluing is tricky because the layers have a tendency to slip around, so I do my best. The important thing is that I don't have any gaps in my wood. bottom half of my bowl assembled, I can finally start turning. I add a piece of wood at the end of the bowl so that I can use the tailstock. This decreases the likelihood that the bowl will fly off the lathe. As you can tell, my gluing was not great so my piece is very imbalanced. This is probably the most nerve-wracking and dangerous part of wood turning. I take it one step at a time and slowly carve away at the wood until it's smooth.
The inside is even tougher because I have to lean over to get a good cutting angle with my chisel. The bottom half is now finished. Now it's time to make the letters, so I start by creating a 2D vector of the letters k -how on SketchUp. I export them to Aspire, the software for the CNC router. The basic idea is that I'll have two layers. The outside of the bowl will be walnut with poplar letters, and the inside of the bowl will just be poplar with no letters. The letters are the depth of one plank, whereas the letter pockets are two planks deep. I start by centering the CNC on my plank. Calibrate the depth of wood. And start the cut path. The first cut path cuts out a slot for the letters as well as a rectangle for each. I leave a tiny bit of thickness on the bottom, then sand it off, releasing the blocks. The second cut path cuts out the letters themselves. I use the same sanding method to release the letters. Now I can glue the letters inside the pockets. The next step is to angle the blocks to form a ring. When you're done, mm -hmm. the I put tape down so that the scrap wood doesn't fall into the crack and potentially shoot back at me. The ring turned out too small. The walnut would be perfectly flush on the outside, but I likely wouldn't get all poplar on the inside of the bowl. If I added a spacer between each segment, I would have more room for error when turning. I glued the remaining two rings onto the rings I've already turned. My favorite wood YouTuber, Frank Howarth, uses this method of having a piece of scrap wood on one side, then using a sort of lever mechanism to apply pressure downward. With the entire bowl now assembled, I can start turning the top half. After everything is relatively smooth, I can add wood filler into the cracks in the letters. The CNC left small gaps, so I mixed some of my old sawdust and glue and pressed it into the cracks. I sand the excess wood filler off. Now I can start sanding the inside and outside of the bowl. I start with a very rough 60 grit and move all the way up to 600 grit to get that polished look and feel. 
My favorite part is adding the finish. It's easily the most rewarding part of turning, and it gives the bowl the deep richness that I've learned to love. I'm using a mineral oil beeswax finish. I take the bowl off the lathe. And use the bandsaw and a fence to cut off the waste block. I hand sand the bottom and add more finish. I was incredibly happy with the way this bowl turned out. The entire process from research and design to building, filming, and editing this video took about 60 hours spread across 12 weeks. This is my last big wood turning project in high school. I would like to say thanks to all my shop teachers who took me under their wing even though I'd never even taken wood shop until this semester. Wood will forever be a part of the way I think, approach problems, and most importantly, it'll be a passion that I'll keep with me for the rest of my life. Thanks for watching.